a happy hump day to you um, so I did this video earlier I did it live and as I was looking at the uh, or going to get the video I discovered that my sound was messed up so I deleted it and I didn't want to go live again <sighs> it's all good it's all good so it is what it is right um, for a while now I've been doing Monday messages and this morning I was inspired to change it up a bit Monday messages is now becoming a coffee clutch with spirit only it's not just going to be on Mondays it's going to be Monday Wednesdays and Fridays and maybe it's not meant to be live I don't know maybe it's meant to be on YouTube I don't know but apparently it's not meant to be on Facebook live so we're just going with what we've got right okay so today is the Wednesday edition of the new a coffee clutch with spirit and please remember if you would like to have a private reading with me you can schedule that um, schedule that through the website but I am today's message was very profound and I just I'm keeping the cards I'm not going to draw new cards today or for this video I just want to go with what was already shared and um, the wording the words will be completely different but I'm hoping that everything that needs to be said that was said previously will be said again maybe just in a different way so excuse me I have tea today because this um, idea came to me after I was already mostly the most of the way through my first cup of coffee this morning or my second cup of coffee we uh, my youngest daughter today was her first day in person at school for the new year and so we've been up a, a little earlier and getting going earlier than normal so okay so the first card that we drew today and I am using the Spirit of the Animals Oracle by Jody Bergsma okay so today is or the first card is dear love be gentle with yourself you heal with the power of love see the light in all things acknowledge your self-worth and grace so the message that I had come through was that we need to be gentle with ourselves we need to be more gentle with ourselves and we need to see we need to learn to see ourselves through the glasses of spirit what's that mean well when I first started my journey some 20 plus years ago I thought I was meant to become somebody completely different and in some ways I am completely different than that person I was back then but a lot of times we see who we are 
in the moment as someone undesirable. We will be lovable. We will be accepted. Our self-worth will be higher when we become the person that we envision we will become at the end of the path. Life in general and especially our spiritual journey, our journey as a spirit is not based upon a destination. The journey is the important part of all of this. Who you are in this moment is exactly who spirit means you to be in this moment. Because if you weren't, you'd be somebody else. That's important. We are who we are meant to be in this moment. The journey is about returning to wholeness, returning to who we are outside of these bodies. The energetic, the spiritual being that we are beyond this body. That's what we are meant to move toward. But that is not the goal for this journey. The journey itself is the goal. So who you are today is who you are meant to be in this moment. And No matter where you are coming from, no matter your background, no matter your past, no matter that you and your human mind don't see you as who you desire to be. No matter who you are in this moment, spirit loves you. Spirit loves you just as you are. So this card is being, is asking us to see ourselves through the eyes, through the filter, through the glasses, of spirit and to love us love uh, ourselves for where we've been where we are right now but tomorrow is not promised to us we cannot say well I'll love myself when I am a yoga instructor or when I'm clean, or um, when I lose 50 pounds. I'll love myself then. No. We're being asked to love ourselves just as spirit, as God, the universe, as source, whatever name you choose to use for that greater power that greater power is asking us to love ourselves now, in this moment, warts and all. Because the truth of the matter is, spirit loves us, warts and all. Be gentle with yourself. You heal with the power of love. So by loving ourselves, we heal ourselves. See the light in all things. See the light in you, no matter where you are on your path. No matter if you're just starting out. 
no matter whether you just experienced your catalyst yesterday, no matter if you've been on this journey for 20 years and you still don't feel like you're where you want to be, love yourself today. Love yourself in this moment because spirit loves you. Not because of <laughs> one of my friends. One of my friends calls it the meat sack. <laughs> spirit loves you, loves each one of us, meat sack and all. Acknowledge your self-worth and grace. Acknowledge who you are. Not your meat sack, but that divine being within. That divine being within is a seed of source. So it's like we're all acorns from the great oak and we're growing to become great oaks ourselves so that seed within you loves you the meat sack <laughs> just as much as source does, as spirit does. We need to remember that. We've been taught, many of us have been taught otherwise, that we are failing, that we are sinful from the moment that we are born. That's not true. It's not. Spirit, God, Goddess, the universe, source, loves us exactly the way we are in this moment. Because it sees us, sees who we truly are beyond the meat sack. So, and the second card that came out today was bison, abundance. Sacred buffalo, cloak me in your wisdom. Keep me warm through the storms of life. Fill my life with goodness. Teach me the way of gratitude and prayer. And when I originally did this video, the thing that stuck out at me was that a lot of us who have had bad experiences, not me, I, I, I was raised religionless. So um, my parents didn't, they were what they called Catholic school survivors. And so they were as far away from religion as they possibly could get but they allowed me to explore. And my grandmother would often, would sometimes go to the Catholic church and she'd bring me with her. And then I had um, my best friend in high school. She went to church every Sunday and she would have invite me along and I would go to um, church camp with her like once a year. And so, so I, I was exposed to religion. And um, when we moved to Ohio, where my husband is from, um, we uh, went to the church that he went to when he was a kid. And so I was exposed to religions, but there are a lot of people who, who, like my parents, shy away from religion. Anything that 
denotes or has any sort of con uh, connotation of religion, they shied away from. And um, so prayer. Prayer, I know, is a trigger word for a lot of people. And when I followed the path of paganism exclusively um there were a lot of people who shied away from the word prayer and i guess i kind of learned to stay away from it as well because it was not that thing i didn't want to be in alignment with religion um because uh that could sometimes make you a target in the pagan community. And so I tried to stay as far away from that as possible. And when angels started coming into <laughs> to my life, it kind of freaked me out because I didn't want to be different. But, um, oh, excuse me, my throat's getting dry. So prayer and angels. But prayer, um, one of my mentors, and she was my spiritual life coach for a while, taught me that prayer is just a conversation with spirit, with God, with source, the universe. It's just a conversation. Our spirit guides, it's just a conversation. And when I started getting more in touch with my own intuition, I realized that Spirit does talk to us in many ways, not just through words. Um, it talks to us through animals we encounter. It talks to us through songs on the radio. Um, the radio or um, serious in my car is one of my mom's favorite ways to communicate with me which makes sense because my mom was an audiophile she loved music and she taught me to love music too but that's always her favorite way of communicating with me and just saying hi but when i really started getting in touch with my intuition I realized that it's a conversation that's ongoing with spirit. The conversation is ongoing. Every way that information or intuitive hits come to us, when we're open and listening it is a constant, ongoing conversation. I mean, granted, if we're not enjoying the conversation, we can shut down if we want to. We're always allowed that. But the conversation has the potential to be constant and ongoing. A lot of times it'll happen through our dreams, too because that's when our monkey minds get out of the way. So, yeah. Okay, the, sec the third card that I drew this morning was Black Bear Guardian. Gentle and wise protector, give me your confidence and power Help me protect the ones I love. Awaken my intuition and guide me. And it was after I received this card that I realized that the message, the overall message is that we're being encouraged to really get in touch with our inner being that part of us that is eternal. And I, I think I've been conveying this since the beginning because I knew what the message was. But 
we're being encouraged to get in touch with our eternal being, that part we are energetically beyond the meat sack. <laughs> And when we are open to the wisdom that our inner being, that seed of spirit within us, when we're open to that, it has an infinite amount of wisdom to share with us. it can and will guide the way in a more graceful manner, meaning beyond the bumps and bruises that we often get when we're allowing our egos and our human selves, our sometimes broken selves to lead the way, our conditioned selves. When we're open to spirit, open to listen to our spirit, the path becomes a little smoother. It becomes a lot smoother. And then the fourth card I drew was B, community. You are a powerful creator. That inner being is a creator. It knows how to work with energy, which everything around us, everything is energy. And that inner being knows how to work with it. It knows how to flow with it. And when we flow with that energy, that is when things become smoother for us. Your work blesses everything you touch. Be open to receiving sweetness. You are the queen of abundance. Abundance in all things is our birthright. We are abundant beings. When we are not experiencing abundance, that's because we have some sort of subconscious block that's keeping that energy away from us. And one thing I was talking about earlier was that I was picking up on community and we're being reminded that you've probably seen the meme around that says we become the summary, the composite of the five people we spend the most amount of time with. There was a discovery made that if you put one clock, one pendulum clock with other pendulum clocks, after a period of time, the en energy of those pendulums will be entrained, meaning they will all end up getting in sync with one another. The same is true with those five people we spend the most amount of time with. So we're being reminded of this to consciously choose our community, our tribe, to look at those that we spend the mo most amount of time with and become aware if the rela energetic relationship between us and those people is one of being fed where energy moves back and forth or 
depleted where energy moves in one direction. Because if we become like the five people that we spend the most amount of time with, are those people truly ones that we wish to become like? Do they feed us? or do they deplete us? Do we feed others or do we deplete them? And that's about how we as an individual spirit and being grows, knowing whether and being aware of whether we feed or deplete others, that is our personal path of growth. And whether others feed, if it's a mutual feeding, that's a good thing. But if we deplete others or others deplete us, then there's something that needs to be worked on. So, so the message is all about getting in touch with our inner being and realize and seeing ourselves and our lives through the vision of our inner being. We're going into Soon we'll have reached the second harvest. The first one occurred on August 1st. So we are about midpoint in the harvest season. This is a time for us to look at our lives, to look at ourselves, to sort through the growth what we, the seeds that we, that were sown in the spring and that have come to fruition and see if it's produce or fruit worth keeping. So this is a time for sorting through the fruit and the chaff and seeing where we want to continue to move forward. Clearing it, clearing the way so that when the next growing season comes, we can plant seeds for the next growing season. So, what in your own life, in your own growth, do you wish to keep? And what needs to be discarded? So, again, if you are interested in having a private reading, I do do those. And I will put the link to the page on my website where you can, can uh, sign up for that or schedule that. And this was Wednesday's Coffee Clatch with Spirit. And I will be back on Friday. And hopefully I will get, get the live on Facebook to work properly. So until then, dear friend, take care of yourself. And I will see you again soon. See you on Friday. Bye-bye.